Hi there, I'm Josh, and today we're talking about Intel Iris Xe graphics in 2023, just about 2024. Now the CPU that I have hooked up to the Intel Iris Xe graphics is an i7-1260P, which has 12 total cores, 4 performance cores, and 8 efficiency cores. It has a base frequency of 3.4GHz and a boost of 4.7GHz. It has 16 gigs of LPDDR5 memory, and was launched in quarter 1 of 2022. The Intel Iris Xe graphics has a max dynamic frequency of 1.4GHz, supports DirectX 12.1, and has a TDP of 28 watts. So I am actually, with a heavy heart, going to say that I'm getting rid of my Book 2 Pro 360 and switching it out for a MacBook Pro. So I wanted to give it one last test before selling it off. So let's hop right into the benchmarks. Modern Warfare 3 at 720p with FSR 2.1 at the balance preset with a dynamic resolution at a 60fps target with the lowest settings, that was a mouthful. Ran with an average frame rate of 47 FPS, a 1% low of 6, and a 0.1% low of 3. So, you could potentially bring FSR 2.1 to ultra performance to get a close to 60 FPS experience, but at that point the game is going to be quite blurry, and I found this to be a good middle ground between frame rate and visuals for Intel Iris Xe graphics. It's nothing too spectacular, but it'll get the job done in a pinch. Now the 1% 0.1% low frame rate could be caused by Modern Warfare or the GPU, I'm not entirely sure. My guess is the GPU because 0.1% performance wasn't fantastic in any of the games listed, but we saw a solid enough average frame rate. The finals at 720p with a 50% res scale talk about blurry. At the low settings, ran with an average frame rate of 71 FPS, a 1% low of 44, and a 0.1% low of 4. So the 0.1% low does indicate that there was some jitter throughout, but it wasn't enough to impact the 1% low frame rate to the point where I would consider it to be unplayable. Baldur's Gate 3 at 720p with FSR 2.1 ultra performance at the low settings, ran with an average frame rate of 38 FPS, a 1% low of 18, and a 0.1% low of 9. So the jitter wasn't too bad in this game in comparison to the other games we talked about, but the 1% and 0.1% low does show that this game did dip below 30 FPS quite often, especially in heavily populated areas as you can see, but there were also instances where it ran almost 60 FPS. Lethal Company at 1080p was completely playable with an average frame rate of 58 and a 1% low of 28 and a 0.1% low of 25. So there were no issues playing Lethal Company whatsoever. This game can run on anything. Counter-Strike 2 really surprised me at the low settings at 720p. We saw an average frame rate of 84 frames per second, which was really impressive, all things considered, because CS2 does enjoy a good CPU. So it was obvious that the GPU is not too bad in terms of holding back the CPU for Counter-Strike 2. Obviously a better GPU would produce much better frame rates, but I would consider this to be more than playable. Destiny 2 at 720p with the lowest settings ran with an average frame rate of 48 frames per second in a Crucible match, so unfortunately not 60 FPS, which I was surprised by considering how old Destiny 2 is, but that's life, and unfortunately, if you're playing a competitive game of Crucible and Destiny 2, you might be at a disadvantage because of the 48 frames per second. Intel Iris Xe was never that great, let's just all be honest here. So seeing it in 2023 still perform at least somewhat okay shows that if you are somebody who just has a basic i5 laptop with Iris Xe graphics, and you're like, hey, I want to play some games, you can if they're not super demanding, but anything that gets into AAA territory, like Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, for instance, might not run at all. And if it does, expect to see sub 60 FPS frame rates and in some cases sub 30 FPS frame rates. Unless you're willing to sacrifice your eyes by going down to 720p with the ultra performance presets in FSR. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, like, subscribe, do what you usually do, and as always, buy yourself something nice.